Lo, there do I see my father. Lo, there do I see my mother. And my sisters and my brothers. Lo, there do I see the line of my people. Back to the beginning. Lo, they do call to me. They bid me take my place among them. In the halls of Valhalla, where the brave may live forever. These are the voyages of the starship Ragnar. Her mission to explore the Shackleton Expanse for new friends and allies, and to fearlessly peer into that final frontier. All right, and welcome everyone to the much-anticipated, long-overdue, Season 3, Episode 7 of Star Trek Valhalla, a Star Trek Adventurer's actual play, run by myself and five amazing role players who I consider very good friends, and it's just always a pleasure to be here with them. So as is tradition, we're just going to go around the table, we're going to have everyone quickly introduce themselves, tell us who they are playing... And, uh, and yeah, we'll just take it from there. So let's start with uh, the captain. We'll go crisscross applesauce until we get to Charles, and then we'll, uh, we'll get going on this thing. Hello, I am Brian. I'm at Mind of Brian on both Twitter and on Twitch, and I am playing Captain Asbetraso, the Betasoid captain who has forsworn his telepathic gifts. And I am Symbol24. You can find me here uh, on Twitter as well on the same names. I play Lieutenant uh, Alden Paris, who currently uh, found out that his husband wasn't his husband and is kind of, uh, taking uh, it not very well. So we'll see where that takes us. Good evening. I'm Sidereal Day, and I play the Bajoran commander, Ajay Shahira, who is chief medical officer and first medical law and chief. Wow. It's it is complicated and it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> yes, you can't chief even say medical it right. officer and first officer. There we go. How does that work? All right, continue. Uh, hi, I'm Drew. I play uh, Lieutenant Commander Krev Glosh, the uh, Tellerite Chief Engineer and Chief Grump aboard the ship. And hello, I'm Charles. Uh, I play Ensign Zed, our Ferengi uh, Chief of Security and Operations Officer. Brilliant. And of course, I am Dare Wolf, the Game Master. And as always, it is a pleasure to be here, and I'm very excited. So we open once again with a exterior shot of the Ragnar traveling at high warp uh, in the middle of space. The stars flying by, those kind of streaks of light that you see when the ship is at warp. And we zoom into the medical bay where we see Commander Ajay. She is at her desk, and Ajay, you have today's opening log. So if you wouldn't mind, take it away. Computer, run encryption program, Borihas. Personal log, stardate 43654.2. Perhaps locking all of my personal logs with old Bajoran resistance codes is overkill, but I cannot take the risk. It's only paranoia if no one's out to get you, after all. And I have proof that SOMETHING is going on. Whether my worst fears are true or not. Whether the captain is himself or someone other. He's not acting as erratically as the other Hagen did. There's none of that chilling unease, that creeping uncertainty in the face of someone familiar acting in a way that makes no sense. But I know what I saw, and his file was the last one open. It could be a ploy, of course, meant to do exactly this. But not Hagen didn't intend to get caught, so what would be the point? He meant for no one to know, after all. That was why he used my terminal, I assume. And he had enough time to cover his tracks well enough that I cannot be certain what other files were tampered with, nor how many. I've since changed all of my passwords, of course, although I've kept that hidden from everyone. I hope. Just as I hope no one realizes how much of a lockdown I have on the personnel files. My staff have access enough for the usual complaints that come through, but nothing deeper than that. Not while I try frantically to vet them, knowing I'm playing 4D chess with two of the boards blocked from my sight, no view of the other player's actions. And knowing that when I blink, the board gets rearranged, but not knowing in what way. 
Is this what my parents felt during the occupation? This sick twisting in your gut, the shaking of your hands? I've taken too many stims. I've tried to pass it off as nerves. The incident with the Klingons, the escalating war, finding out Hagen isn't Hagen. I suspect that will only hold for so much longer. Especially given the games I'm playing with my duty logs. They're accurate, always. But I've made backup copies that include more information. The full log of which crew members I think I can clear. Which ones I put back on the suspect list. None of that can go into a regular log. Not now, while we're in the middle of it. I can only hope I'll be able to add it back in later. Once this passes. Ugh, I sound like a madwoman. And all this on top of preparations for vault and war. I'm relieved we're not meant to be facing combat in the vault system. Just providing aid to the vaultees, affected as they are by our war. It's always the innocents who get dragged into such things and made to suffer the most. I might have been a child during the Cardassian occupation, but I remember that much. By the prophets, I do not want to see more war. Not that the Klingons have left us much choice. You can't negotiate with someone who doesn't want peace, and rolling over to their demands won't make things better. Sometimes you have to fight. That probably makes me a poor doctor. Knowing that, if it came down to it, I would pick up a stunner. Or, yes, something deadlier, to defend those who are mine. But sometimes you have to harm to heal. The dose makes the poison, infection must be burned out or cut off at the source. War is like that but I still worry what it will turn us into. Who you were at the start of a standard Starfleet deployment isn't who you are at the end, true enough. But war? That's the cruelest crucible I know. And to go towards one with a crew and a captain I cannot currently trust is insanity indeed. We do what we must. And I will do what I must to find these infiltrators and stop them from harming my crew and my ship further than they already have. End log. Eight. That was really good. That was really good. You may have three momentum. That was fantastic. Wow. Uh, A plus. And uh, Jesus. Yeah. Um. All right. So as you end your log, uh, there is a chirp um, at your office door, which was closed, and uh, Lieutenant Paris may enter the scene as requested. Yes, come in. Oh, uh, thanks, Doctor. Um, can, can we talk? Mr. Paris, of course. Uh, shut the door, sit down. <sighs> As Paris sits down, something falls out. It's a, it's a hypo spray. Mm. Oh, shut the fuck. Mr. Paris, why do you have that? Um, you know, you weren't supposed to see it. Oh. Well, I've seen it now. As he picks it up, you know, just puts it inside and looks at it. How, how can I ever be trusted again? How can I trust myself again, ever? Because none of us realized about Hagen. He was, he was, but he, but he was, he is. I didn't see it. Maybe. I don't know. None of us saw it, Mr. Paris. I'm, I'm his husband. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, I... How do I, how do I move on from this? How do I, 
How do any of us? We keep going. We find Hagen. And we make it right. Maybe that takes words. Maybe that takes action. It will take time. But it will only take time if we continue to move forward. Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I, I can't see it. Because we're still in the middle of it. You'll see a way forward if you keep going. This might sound harsh, but you can't do anything if you stop moving. And right now, Hagen needs us to keep going. He needs us to find him. All right. And when we find him, you apologize and you go from there. Oh. <laughs> oh, is he ever going to forgive me? That's up to him. Forgiveness is always up to the other person. All you can do is look him in the eye and say, I'm sorry. All right. All right. All right. I know this is normally a therapist or ship counselor. I'm sorry. You, <clears throat> I think you're the only one that could have understood. Well, luckily, I do have some background in therapy. I always forget. Yes, not how I was intended to use it, but... Now, I think you'd better give me that hypo, Mr. Paris. It's so weird with Chris. Can I, can I get a hug? <laughs> I got no one else. All right. Uh, Ajay will stand up around the desk. Paris, we'll find him. You no. Know, stands up, fumbles a bit. Yep. Uh, We'll find him. I promise. You promise? I can't promise what state he'll be in, but I promise we'll find him. Good. And uh, she will reach out and hug Paris. Paris will hug back. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And as we cut away from this scene, we see standing just outside the doorway, a shadow it seems to be waiting for something to happen, but we don't see what happens. We actually pivot away from this scene and we're actually gonna pivot down. We're gonna pivot down into main engineering. We're gonna pivot down into main engineering where we see Lieutenant Brownson with her eye patch still got some burns and some uh, cut on her face and we see she is at a console and seems very very frustrated very very frustrated as though she is trying to ensign uh, what i'm sorry petty officer bronson not lieutenant petty officer bronson forgive me um so slip the mind my bad uh the petty officer yes petty officer bronson but we see her sitting at a console and she appears to be entering some sort of code or data and it keeps giving her a did it did it did it did it did the, the error and finally she uncharacteristically slams her fist down on the console and you hear this kind of cracking of the glass and a little spark pulls her hand back shaking and just starts to mutter to herself from up Next to the main controls of the warp core, we see, of course, Lieutenant Commander Karev. You notice this, Lieutenant Commander Karev. What do you do?
You are muted. You are silent. Silent. Breaking my consoles won't make it make them work better, Bronson. Apologies, sir. I, I've just been, I've just been very frust. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I will, I'll make sure it gets repaired right away. Deep breath. You've been through a lot. What's yes? He I finally have... looks up, turns around. Uh, what? What's the problem? I can't can't figure what? out how to focus the linear spatial induction inhibitor. It just it keeps giving me an error, and I don't I don't understand the system anymore. I just it, everything is just everything just doesn't seem to work like it used to. And you. Can you give me a hand, sir? Krev looks back over at his console, presses a, turns around and presses a button to, uh, like, kind of shut down the screen, and then slides down the ladder and goes over to work with her at her console. Yeah. As you get up next to her, I'd like you to roll me an insight and presence. A presence insight. Difficulty of two. Uh, I can't roll both of those. Wait, I can only roll insight or presence. I'm sorry. My brain's a little frazzled right now. It's okay. Forgive me. Security. Uh, I want you to roll medicine. presence. I, 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 I. Presence. Uh, I want you to roll presence medicine, please. Presence medicine. Presence and med medicine. Yes. I'd rather do insight, but you know, whatever. You know, what? I'll allow insight. Insight medicine. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, it's my first time playing this game. I, I don't know. It's what okay. I'm doing. It's okay. Some of us, you know, we we have a little more it's, experience. It's been a week. <laughs> well, if you're good. Then. Uh, I'm going to burn a uh uh um. Momentum. Uh, this is touchy feely shit. I don't have any any. Yeah, you don't have any focus. No, no. This is not. This is not what Krev does. Excellent. You notice Krev that Bronson's right hand, same side that she has the eye patch on. Her right hand is visibly shaking, so it almost looks like she has a kind of uh, a tick or a nervous twitch, and it's just like resting on her knee, but it's just shaking. Just kind of like shaking like this. And she doesn't seem to notice it, but her left hand is up, and it's like covering her mouth, and you can see she is... You may not be touchy-feely, but you know she's like having a panic attack right now or or almost about to have a panic attack um okay he um leans over her i mean next to her he's not that tall uh <laughs> lean uh kind of <clears throat> leans around her puts his hand like on her shoulder uh as he like leans around her and uh taps at the uh um screen around the damage <laughs> um look you just have to oscillate the emergency plasma harmonic discriminator remember right i right that <laughs> bronson bronson drove this to me look before me. i just i bronson I, she struggles not to look at you and at commander krev she seems to be resisting with all of her might, all of her whatever strength she has. Finally, as you lean in, you see her one eye turn towards you. You can see she has a scar. There's still some red burning where she's still getting treatments. And she looks... She looks a little broken. There is water pooling in her left eye. See, she is 
struggling. She's trying to hold back tears. But as she catches your gaze, it all comes out. The floodgates open and she begins to sob. Several of the other engineers inside main engineering look to her and she just starts to she just starts to blither at you and one moment she says enjoy starfleet to become a monster i i i i wanted to learn about science and engineering i wanted to explore i wanted to i didn't i didn't sign up for this and she's just she is having an emotional mental breakdown in this moment and and she reaches out to you and grabs not aggressively but like grabs onto your uniform and just buries her face in it and you just hear the muffled sobs he, from... he does Go ahead. yeah he he does that thing that people that are uncomfortable with people showing emotions around them do where he's like ah there, there, and he, you know, just makes gruff, comforting noises at her, um, just deflecting whatever random various outbursts she has of, it'll be fine, there are plastic surgeons that can fix it, or they can make you look more badass, I don't know how this works for humans, uh, you know, just... Uh, utterly useless things that he's saying but he's trying to say them in as comforting a manner as he can and he just looks miserably up like oh my god i this is so hard like at the other engineers uh but not they like, are all me... avoiding eye contact and <laughs> pretending like it's not happening and Krev is proud of them and will commend <laughs> them uh, next time he talks to them. Uh, yeah, he just through gas. He just for lets air. he just lets her do what she needs to do, through and gasps, tries to be as comforting as he can. Gaps of air, struggling to formulate sentences. She looks up at, and at Commander Krev. She looks up at you. Sir, may I be excused from my duty? Would you like to see the dock, or do you just want some time alone? I would just like to return to my quarters, sir, if I may. You take the time you need, P.O. You're you. dismissed. Sir. Not another word. She stands up. She turns. She walks out. Main engineering. There is a very quiet murmur around main engineering. Several of the engineering officers look to you, but none of them say anything, simply nod to you, and they go back to work. Krev looks down at the smear on his uniform, uh kind of looks down and then you know looks back towards the door and does that like sad eye like oh my protege is hurting thing but there's kind of something at the like the 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 mood on the ship is just so like there's so little trust and he's a little like, there, I don't know, there's some kind of weird, like, suspicion look on his face, too, but, like, still, there's a tumult of emotions just kind of going over his face. In, and... Give me an insight security in this moment, because I want to see if you pick up something. I want to see if you pick up something that's a little bit off. Just a little bit off in this situation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use another momentum. Yeah. Um... Difficulty in this is a two, so that's that is a fail. All right, perfect, perfect, okay. perfect, 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 perfect. That's actually perfect. So you turn to walk away, and the camera pans over. The camera pans over to Moran, 
uh, who is this gentleman over on the left-hand side of our map. And as it pans over, you see that he is beginning to reroute some life support systems from key points of the ship to other points of the ship. Uh, it seems a little out of... Uh, but no one else notices this. He just does it, he uses the distraction, and then he turns and goes about his business. Just like lowering the oxygen on a certain deck by like 30%. Just so it's a little bit thinner than it was before. But we'll, we'll leave that as it is. We'll leave that as it is. Probably not a big deal. Probably doesn't mean anything. We'll just go with it. But our next scene, our next scene is actually going to be in the captain's ready room. The captain's ready room. For captain, the mood on the ship. No, not the ready room. We're not in the ready room. I think you and I am, but yeah, oh, I'm not I in my it. ready room. Forgive me. You are going to be on... Ah, it's going to be in a corridor. Ooh, I love it. I actually have a corridor sheet uh, that I've never had a chance to use. I just have to find it. Uh, so bear with me. Hold on. Wait a minute. Where is it? You know what we can do? Call me crazy. Call me crazy. We can actually use the sick bay because the sick bay has a corridor in it. There is actually a corridor in the sick bay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the corridor of the sick bay. Hashtag the inches we need are all around us, as it were. So you're in the corridor. And I'm going to grab the good old captain. And Ensign Zed. Now, Ensign Zed, the cap, you had requested a meeting, and it sounds like Captain, you had been like, meet me in this random hallway that doesn't get a lot of foot traffic. Yeah, I'm not gonna be in my ready room. If you want a meeting, meet me in uh, in on deck eleven. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So you enter through a set of doors. The captain enters through a set of doors. It's like a meet queue, and you meet mm -hmm. each other in this particular <laughs> hallway. Yeah, yeah. Florence. Yeah, yeah was well, um, Zed has a, a data pad up. You know, he, he's walking in very quickly and, and, you know, moves towards the captain. As Zed arrives, uh, mm -hmm. the captain, so I'll, the captain will have been waiting for him to get off the turbo lift. And immediately mm -hmm. he's like, all right, Mr. Zed, follow me. Uh, what do you want mm -hmm. to talk about? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, captain. Uh, and and as, as you look at Zed, uh, he's going to have kind of like some dark circles under his eyes. He looks tired. Like he's been uh, maybe working too hard or putting in too many hours. He says, um, uh, he says, uh, Captain, uh, I am I am most concerned about our prisoner, the imposter Hagen that is in the brig. Uh, after days and days of interrogation, he simply refuses to to divulge anything at all. And all of all of my security staff's attempts to locate the missing Hagen have come to nothing, Captain. <clears throat> and it is it is most frustrating i i can see that i can see how it might be <clears throat> as they walk down the corridor they're walking towards mm -hmm. the rear of the ship towards the shuttle base mm -hmm. captain i uh, perhaps we should attempt a different means of uh of interrogation. Uh, They're going to reach the, as as you say that, they reach the door to, there's a storage room behind the shuttle bay mm -hmm. parking, the shuttle parking bay. The captain taps in a couple of commands into the panel and the door opens. He's like, uh, yeah, uh, come in and tell me what you're thinking. I know it is quite unorthodox and uh, perhaps even somewhat unethical, but, uh, well, <laughs> I've been, I've been doing extensive research and, well, perhaps uh, in light of such a desperate situation of, of, of a missing crewman, uh, it might be considered. Perhaps when Imposter Hagen is asleep, we could fill the, the brig cell with a sleep gas and unknown to him, transport move him to the holodeck then we could uh, initiate a program that would make him think that he had escaped and we could monitor what he says or does uh once once he uh he enters the simulation normally it is not something i would entertain but i do not know where else to turn captain 
in your opinion, what are the odds of success on that? Well, <clears throat> I perhaps fifty percent. There is a chance that he uh, that that we we could observe uh, observe Hagen, uh, but if he does not speak to anyone or or uh, type in anything or uh, if he doesn't incriminate himself. He may discover he's in a simulation before uh, he reveals anything to us. Yeah, I was going to ask, how are you going to ensure that he isn't um, made aware of the fact that he is in a holodeck and then takes advantage of that fact to affect an actual escape? You are quite right, Captain. Uh, perhaps I should uh, I should reevaluate the the plan and uh, come up with contingencies in case that should occur. Uh, yeah, give us some thought while you accompany me onto the. Um, uh, I'm actually headed over on, into one of the nacelles to take a look at the Bussard uh, emitter. Uh, so oh. if you could come with me, and uh, the captain taps a few buttons on the panel, and the Jeffrey yeah. tube like opens yeah. up. Yeah, uh, Captain, there is something else that I wish to talk to you about. Uh, sure, you can talk about mm. it on the way, and then the captain sort of ducks in and climbs right. out of the Jeffrey tube. As he as he's climbing up, you know, he he's just rattling away. You know, he's saying, uh, Captain, I. I have been worried about the prospect of war with the Klingons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most specifically, that we might lose sight of our Starfleet mission in the midst of war. But uh, you, Captain, have renewed my hope. The oh. way you handled those Klingons while we were being tested, you reminded me that even in the face of overt hostility, we can still stay true to our values. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Um, there's a couple of things I want to tell you while we're here in this Jeffrey's tube. Yes, Captain. Um, Mr. Paris has uh, put in a request to be relieved of duty. I have so far managed to avoid mm -hmm. actioning that request. Uh, but I have had Lieutenant Commander Ackard, uh, of, from your security detail, uh, monitor his accesses and um, pull a report of all the systems he's accessed and made use of in the past couple of weeks. I'm telling you this because you should know what your people are doing and what they're, why they're doing it. Uh, I'm having him pull this report and examine it because uh, while I respect your uh, professional integrity, I also did not want to put you in a position where you needed to report to me about your best friend. Thank you, Captain. That is most thoughtful. I am I'm most surprised uh, to learn of his of this, his request, uh, I was unaware of it, and uh, uh, and uh, Zed seems, you know, kind of shocked by this, and and almost kind of only half listening, you know, because he's he's kind of off in his head now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Captain, uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, what sort of uh, report or is being formulated? Uh, Lieutenant Commander Acker has pulled uh, the systems report on any access that has used uh, Lieutenant Paris's uh, access codes or any of the activity that he's had on any of the systems. Uh, as as he finishes sort of talking about that, we emerge into the corridor right. that is effectively just the mm -hmm. long nacelle. Do um, you suspect Lieutenant Paris of any, any sort of misconduct? Uh, do, have you generally found Lieutenant Paris to be a stupid man? Well, quite the contrary. He is uh, very intelligent. That, uh, that checks out. Um, would, would you have would you have been fooled by uh, an intimate partner for as long as Mr. Paris was? Well, I uh, and he he blushes a a, a deep shade of of orange uh, because Zed has never had an intimate partner, and, and uh, he's <laughs> <laughs> so he's uh, Captain, uh, Kevin completely uh, ignores it and just yeah, is yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, saying uh, that uh, that. Lieutenant Paris has done anything suspicious. However, uh, a, an intimate partner will often have access to the type of uh, codes and such that you, you might share with someone in that, on that level. And so it might be interesting to see if there's any uh, discrepancies that we can use to find, um, to perhaps aid in the pursuit of finding with, uh, Nurse Hagen. Captain, your yes, combat chirps. It is Lieutenant Commander Jonathan John Ackard. Uh, mm -hmm. And he comes over there. Captain, the report you had requested, I have it completed. Um, All right, if you can forward it to the pad I'm carrying, and the, <laughs> Captain reveals he's carrying a pad, 
Uh, the encryption code is Alpha Alpha Tango four seven. Alpha Alpha Tango four seven. Sending now, sir. And Captain, you get a you get a little data packet. Uh, it appears that Lieutenant Paris has accessed uh, the Holodeck program. He has been playing a Holodeck program uh, that is called My Wedding Day uh, on repeat for the last two weeks since the events of the Klingons and the reveal. And um, he has also been replicating. He spent most of his replicator rations on some very strong brandy. Very strong brandy. Um, Klingon brandy, actually. Um, stuff will burn the hair off your chest. but uh, Or put hair on it. I don't know. But yeah, that's pretty much all he has done, uh, according to this uh, this security log, over the past two weeks. Uh, we emerge, so we get to the end of the of the nacelle, and we're at the Bussard. So he'll, he'll be reading mm -hmm. this, uh, and sort of we get to the Bussard uh, beam emitter, and uh, the captain will say, uh, "Mr. Zed, do you do you have any idea why I might have brought you here?" Actually, Captain, I, I was wondering that myself, and then I remembered that you have uh, uh, you have a vast experience and interest in engineering matters. I thought perhaps there was something here that you may want to have looked into yourself. Uh, the captain um, pulls out what is essentially like a, a panel that is um, mounted to the underside of the emitter, just slides it out. It's clearly a panel that is like a maintenance panel that's mm -hmm. clearly been modified. And he says, this is my back door. Um, the Bussard emitter generates a disruption field that would prevent any monitoring technology from, uh, from, from being able to see what happens in the Bussard emitter. Um, I've only come down here twice, uh, both times, previous to now I've caused a an emitter disruption and just volunteered to take a look myself even Mr. Krev does not know that this panel exists I have entangled its systems with transporter room 4's systems so any accesses that are made through this panel will appear as if they've been um, run through transporter room 4 uh, but I've recently made a modification that will allow it uh, to access the systems without leaving any trace. Um, the reason I'm showing this to you is that what I would like you to do is run a sensor sweep, uh, a level four sensor sweep of the ship from this panel. Uh, it should mean that anybody on the ship who is able to interrupt any kind of uh, data feed will not be aware that the data feed is occurring. And so you should be able to get valid results. Uh, I have reason <gasps> to suspect that I that Mr. Hagen was not operating alone. I don't know who else may have been part of the, uh, but they are absolutely wandering the ship. So as chief of security, I think you're the only person I can trust. Yes, to... yes. Of course, Captain, this is a excellent idea. <clears throat> uh, uh, Mr. Zed? Yes. I, I want you to know that should you uh, speak to any of your Ferengi relatives, uh, they may tell you about my having uh, asked them some particularly probing personal questions about you. Um, I assure you it was just so that I would be confident in my assessment of whether or not you were still the appropriate Mr. Zed. And he pats him on the shoulder oh. and he's like, hmm. I think you are. Um, but if you stab right. me in the back, I have planted an explosive device in your quarters that if I don't deactivate, <clears throat> will explode. Uh, yes, he turns pale. He's like, uh, 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 Ah, <laughs> uh, you'll that see it on the, you'll see a, it on the sensor sweep, but rest assured uh, that it's key to my biogenics, so you won't be able to defuse it before it explodes. <laughs> this is it's not a human joke. All right, you just got an extra momentum, by the way, from <laughs> a vampire. Excuse me, from vampire. That's hilarious. Uh, all right, so you're gonna give us a control security difficulty of three. All right, control security. Difficulty of three. Yeah. And um, the ship or Captain Treso may assist. May I spend a, spend a momentum? You should spend... Of course you can. You should yes. spend two and give me a threat to roll four dice. <laughs> okay. I will try right, to spend do momentum. All right. Okay. 
Um, Don't ask. Do. I also no. have, well, let's see here. I have computers as a focus. Uh, yeah, that'll play. All uh, right. Sensor security of the ship? Yes. Cool. Ship always gets focus. All right. Ship will give you one. Nice. Excellent. Boom. All right. So, Ensign said, this doesn't mm. happen instantaneously, but you begin a scan of the ship. And a couple of really weird anomalies pop up. A couple of things that just don't look quite right. There are several transport logs that are very, very well hidden, but not hidden well enough. Basically, someone was transported. You can't figure out who, but someone was transported first from Lieutenant Paris's quarters about two and a half weeks ago. Another person was transported from the medical bay. And more recently, a person was transported from the medical bay down to one of the lower decks, specifically where the runabout is held. And there are three other instances where this has happened and those transporter logs were deleted. Ah, uh, so... Also, uh, you come to the realization that all of the holodeck playthroughs of Lieutenant Paris, these are all and every one of those has been falsified. Uh, so they have not re really been... No. The program is not run. Correct. Captain. Uh, uh, he, he's going to share all, all, of, all of this with the captain. He'll say, Captain, this is... It's not looking good for Lieutenant Paris. Do, do you think perhaps that, that Lieutenant Paris, how, well, do you think he's behind this or he has been somehow replaced? I don't know, but I think we should maybe have a security detail uh, surreptitiously approach his location. I will, I will ask uh, Mr. Velez to do so. Uh, also, um, oh, also, what the, captain the brandy of... though? The brandy? That's real, by the way. The brandy yeah. is real. So the captain the taps things... a couple of uh, of commands onto the pad he's carrying, mm -hmm. slides it back into his back pocket, and he's like, "You don't have to worry about the uh, explosive device." Uh, 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 thank you, Captain. Uh, what I was going to say was that, uh, well, uh, the captain's right there looking at everything that that that. That Zed does, correct? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 uh, Zed, Zed wants to do something, uh, later when the captain is not, uh, you, you uh, know, in his presence. Yeah, the, so, the captain, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. if yeah. you're not obvious, if you're not, um, obviously, try, if you don't try to cover that up, the captain will be like, oh, uh, now that you have this access, it'll only last, like, this, this back door will only last about another hour. Um, and then the circuits are all going to burn out. So if there's anything else you'd like to check, uh, especially if you're now concerned about me, um, you know what? You you go ahead. Uh, and uh, I just trust you'll take care of the parasite problem. Well, uh, Captain, if I were to be concerned about you, uh, I th this very console would be suspect. Uh, you, you could have uh, programmed it to uh, feed me exactly the information that you wanted me to. Uh, therefore, Checking for anything to uh, to verify your story here, but uh, it does not. You make an excellent. Good. You make an excellent point, Mister Mister Said. Is there someone whose word you would trust over any other person? Oh well, I, I, do you mean on the ship? I do. Um, I, I'm specifically thinking of someone you think could come and vet my work and uh, assure you that I have not pre-programmed any results into the. Ah, uh, <clears throat> well, um, uh, I will consider it, Captain, and see if there's someone. Uh, um, I did study engineering extensively in the academy. <laughs> the captain pulls out that pad again, taps a few more buttons, and hands it over. It is clearly a transporter initiation pad. It's got a list of the entire crew complement, and he's like, literally, um, transport any single person you feel like will be able to validate this <clears throat> i will leave um i'll head back to my 
to my ready room. Um, but you'll notice that I'm on here. Uh, I assure you that this is not a trick. Transporter room four will absolutely beam whoever you ask for to this location. They should be able to vet my information. Now that will accelerate the self-destruct on the console by about 20 minutes. So you'll only have 40 minutes to vet my work. Uh, however, <clears throat> it, it'll just, the, the circuits will just burn out and leave no trace. It won't explode. <clears throat> of course, Captain. Um, let me know what you decide. And the captain hands him the pad and then turns around and just walks away very stiffly, like kind of still expecting to get stabbed in the back. Like, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Zed would like to to scan to see if there really is an explosive in his in his quarters. There was. <laughs> All right. He's quite alarmed at this. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, um, I think he's going to uh, he's going to actually transport two people to this location. Ooh, you can't. Not oh, can't? You transport it's one. only one. <sighs> well, so, uh, well, take your poison. His, his first instinct is to transport Commander Krev. Uh, because he is the expert in in all matters engineering, but Commander Ajay would be an expert in uh, telling if someone is an imposter or not. And the captain did just have this. Uh, now Zed doesn't trust any anyone. Uh, so um, have him flip a coin. It's the most Ferengi thing you could do. That's right. Go back yes. to your roots. Go back yeah, to your go roots. Go back to your roots. Pull out some money. Yeah. Back to your roots. Uh, pull out just a, make a slip. sure. Just make sure it's not a uh, double sided. That's right. So odd or even. Pull out a slip of latinum. I rolled even, so he's going to transport Commander Ajay here. Okay. There is a moment, Commander Ajay. You are in the middle of working on a little pet project, and suddenly you see glowing blue light, and you realize you're being transported. You have just enough time to grab one thing. You think about what you grab, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but you are transported to a small Jeffrey's tube, and, um, Ensign Zed, you notice that Commander Ajay seems a little different. Commander Ajay, take a moment. Describe to the class what's different about you, Commander Ajay. You you think her hair's been pulled back, maybe? Normally she wears it down except for when she's in the middle of a surgery. You think it's pulled back? That's all. Maybe she was getting ready for a surgery? Yeah. Um, Zed's uniform is a little disheveled. Uh, uh, like you know how like they can like have yeah, it yeah. to where like it's like yeah. the flaps down or whatever. It's kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Zed's lobes are tingling. He's he's over suspicious of everyone. Uh, uh, and he he looks. He says, uh, uh, "Please forgive me, Commander, for transporting you uh, without warning. Uh, were you in the middle of something?" And he's yes. looking at his disheveled. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. I, with everything going on with Hagen, well, with not Hagen, I should say, I've, it's not that I don't trust the rest of my staff, but I, Hagen was my right hand. I depended on him for a lot. I understand. Uh, uh, it is about that uh, very thing. Uh, that is the reason that I have transported you here. This pad here, <clears throat> would you be able to scan it for the captain's DNA and verify whether it is indeed the captain's DNA or an imposter? You think, why would you think the captain's an imposter? I simply would like to rule it out. 
Is this because of Mr. Hagen? Well, not Hagen, Mr. Zed? <clears throat> uh, uh, it is, yes. I see. All right, if it will put your mind at ease. And she will pull out a her medical scanner and she will uh I'm, she will sca I'm dropping three threat, don't ask me why. Okay. Okay. All right. Just I dropped three threat, just FYI. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Okay. Um so uh, I will pull out my, my medical tricorder and I will scan for the biomatter. Yeah, give me a uh, give me a control medicine, a difficulty of two. Actually, difficulty of one. It's pretty sta standard stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, we don't have any momentum. Uh, as for applicable focus. No, no, Commander Ajay, you don't have. You don't have momentum. You do have another resource. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't want to give you threat, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh... All right. For uh, uh, applicable focus. Technically, this would be xenobiology. He's a betazoid. 100% going to allow it. <laughs> All right. Hey. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's the captain. But what do you tell Zed? I. Zed. Mr. Zed. I. The scanner says that it's the captain's DNA, but. I can't be certain that that's accurate. The false Hagen had access to my sick bay for however long he's been here. For all I know, the personnel files have been tampered with. <clears throat> Men or Ajay, before Ensign Zed can respond, yeah. your combat chirp, com badge chirps. It's a very drunken Lieutenant Paris. Hey, hey, Commander. I I know we talked, I, uh, but it's too. Can I come see you? Why don't you stay where you are, and I will come to you, Mister Paris. It sounds like you should not be walking. That that's a good idea. Hmm. Can. Uh, okay. I'll wait with you with my bartender buddy here. What's your name again? Uh, he says his name is Brian. My name is Brian. I don't think that's his real name. Everyone calls me Bri Bri, the, the bartender guy. The bartender guy. <laughs> that's a meta joke. <laughs> Remember what's one? There it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Mr. Zed, it seems I'm needed elsewhere. Yes. Uh, uh, and <clears throat> Ajay will hand him back. The uh, the thing she just scanned, but and, also and as she does so, ends in Zed. I am gonna give you a chance here. You are gonna do an insight security difficulty on this is a two because your guard is down. I am gonna mm -hmm. spend one additional threat to increase the difficulty to a three, as Commander Ajay goes to hypo spray you. And now we're going to see whether or not you notice it coming or you are distracted. All right. So, insight security. Correct. And Difficulty of three. What focuses I don't suppose, do you have? Well, I have investigation. I no. don't know if that would help. Nah. I do have uh, here all trust nothing. I will allow... You know what? But it's, that is not a focus. Okay. The value. It's, you could spend, your you could spend a buddy? determination to give yourself an automatic yeah. two two success. Uh, or it's, so it's actually a talent. Okay. Uh, not oh. a value. Okay. I think that allows yeah. you to re-roll, if I remember correctly. Or or I think that it it 
in increases the difficulty of of lying to me or something like uh, that? Ah, yes. Okay. Or, or so here's the thing. <clears throat> difficulty of three, it's actually going to go down to difficulty of two because you have that talent. That is, I remember it reduces the difficulty of being lied to by one. I recall this talent now. Right. Yes. All right. So insight security. Let's difficulty do of it. two. Here we go. And you said no to investigation. No to investigation. Because I'm not really investigating. No, you're not. So, you got uh, the Zed. All right, here we go. So, oh, and uh, do we have any? Uh, you have zero you? momentum. momentum. You could give him. No, I'm not going to say what you could give him. <laughs> you have another oh, resource oh. you could spend. <laughs> yeah, you could give him threats. <laughs> yeah. If uh, is would it be one threat for for three dice? Uh, yes, it would be one threat for yeah. three dice. Let's do it because more threat is. All right. All right. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right. You succeed. You <clears throat> notice that Commander Ajay is lunging towards you with a hypo spray. And now we go into a very interesting moment <laughs> where we are going to basically enter into a bit of a struggle. A bit of a struggle. Oh. So, Commander Ajay, you yes. do not automatically succeed. <laughs> You are going to roll a fitness security difficulty of two, and then Ensign Zed is going to roll a fitness security, and uh, for every success he gets, it increases your difficulty by one. So basically, you guys are in a struggle in this Jeffrey's two, Ooh. and things are about to get crazy. Yes. Uh, all right, so fitness security. Yep. Yes, you may absolutely use threat to increase your dice pool, Commander Ajay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. You absolutely may. Uh, uh, then I'm going to increase my dice pool to four. I will spend three threat for you. Hit the security. Yes. All right. You go first, Ensign Zed. This is your dodging. All right. Fit this security. I don't think I have any focuses that... Hand-to-hand -hand uh, combat would be what it would be. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any of that. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, dun dun da. Oh. All right, your difficulty, Commander Ajay, is a four. Oh, oh! the party gains <laughs> two momentum. The party gains two momentum. Do you well, want to spend a determination, or do you want to spend a determination to reroll that zero? I would like to spend a determination to reroll that zero. You may do so. You not you do not gain any momentum. She did reroll that zero. Let's see what happens. Um, that's actually really good rolls, by the way. Like <laughs> considering that you have a seven and a one. <laughs> I know, right? It's amazing. Uh, fitness. The dice have a story to tell, baby. Security. Here it goes. One d twenty. All the marbles. Oh, nope. so she lunges at you, Zed. And you are able to grab her wrist and, like, lean back, and you put your foot into her chest and kick her off you. You have a chance now to respond. Ooh. You've got a phaser at your hip. You've got your fists. How do you respond? Zed has the pad in, his, in one hand, too. Yes, yes. And he's like, they hit it to transport her back to, to, oh to medical. Oh, my God. You know what? Auto success. That's brilliant. You boom <laughs> button. Auto success. Commander Ajay, you're still trying to get up and you're woo, 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 and you are back in medical. Back in medical. Okay. And since okay. then, what do you do? Uh, Zet security. Uh, de deploy a team and apprehend Commander Ajay at once. There is a response. There is a response from your security team and you get a sp response from from Lieutenant Junior Grade Soziak. At once, uh, Ensign said, I will make sure it is done. And, and then, uh, he's going to head and, off. And then Zed's going to turn to this 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 panel before it self-destructs. Uh, where does the panel show uh, the captain? Captain, where are you? Uh, well, I've just made my way back, so I'm probably just exiting uh, into the, the supply room behind the shuttle parking bay. Uh, uh, com computer. Oh, I don't trust anybody. Uh, so, so uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. he he paused for a moment, and then he's oh, and he's gonna just you know try and do that slide thing down the Jeffrey's tube ladder yep. quickly, yep. 
and try and catch up with the captain as quickly as possible. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Mm. And as you start running after the captain as quickly as possible, we cut back to main engineering. We cut back to main engineering where SCPO Nevik enters into engineering and she is currently she is currently holding on to a type 3 phaser. Uh, she has one in one hand and uh, one in uh, and then one in the other. She has two. And as she phaser enters, rifles. It's yeah, serious. Phaser, phaser rifles. Phaser rifles. She, phaser rifles. <laughs> she enters in and she tosses one over, tosses one over to Ensign Frank Moran. And she looks up at uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Lieutenant Commander Karev and she says, Lieutenant Commander, the ship is currently being uh, assaulted by uh, by some unknown force. We need you to come with us right away, sir. Absolutely. I agree. Let me lock down my station. Uh, Krev is going to, if he can, lock uh, uh, lock all engineering control. Uh, okay. What I'm going to have you do. Control engineering. Difficulty of two. As you as you say that, you hear the charging of a phaser. You look back over your shoulder and you see Ensign Taval look over at one Nevik. She looks to him and says, what are you doing? And you hear a phaser blast. And you watch as you watch as uh, Ensign Taval is knocked out, Vaporized? killed, oh, we're not sure. Just, she drops. She doesn't disintegrate though? No, 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 doesn't That's disintegrate. Well. Doesn't disintegrate I... right away. And give me a control engineering difficulty of two to lock it down. I'm giving you a threat. Yes! I to feed me. Increase feed my dice pool. I love this. I love this journey for me. Uh, I am going to use my focus of improvisation. And, oh God, what else can I throw at this? Um, Oh, mother of God. Uh, my technical expertise, uh, whenever you attempt a task assisted by the ship's computer or sensors, you can re-roll a d20. Done. Yes. I mean, the ship should help with the yep. computers. Yeah, yep. the ship should help. Mm -hmm. The ship totally wants me to Computers to engineering. This. Computers engineering it is. Wow. Wow. Hey. Wow. That is uh, three threat to you. Three threat to you. Three okay. momentum for us, you mean? You absolutely. Uh, I meant I meant momentum. I said threat, but I meant momentum. Uh, and as they as uh, as that happens, you look back and you see Moran, who has levied, uh, who has leveled the phaser at you, and he says, "On your knees now." The rest of engineering has their hands up. You flick him off. He doesn't move, but he's not gonna like you know he's not gonna like fight. But he's not getting on his knees. All like, right. Fuck you. All right. Brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. Things are getting a little crazy. Things are getting a little crazy. Uh, I am going to spend the remainder of my threat. The remainder oh, of my threat. Uh, which wasn't much, but I'm going to spend the rest of it. And all of the ship's communication systems go out. The ship comes to a sudden halt. Everyone is knocked from their feet. And Captain, as you're making your way back to the bridge, you get a very frantic um, uh, message. Your combat chirps. He said, uh, someone from the bridge, you're not even sure who it says, says, Sir, something is... And then you just hear phaser fire. And then you get a ship-wide announcement that the bridge has been locked down. Where am I? Well, uh, has, you are, has Zed you, caught up to me yet? You are in so a turb. You are about to step into a turbo lift. Okay. You, you turn so back the, uh, to see Ens and Zed huffing and puffing, and right. uh, so we're still, so we're running still on deck you. eleven. This still is important. Still on deck eleven. Yes. Listen, I'm not. I, I definitely don't have the intrepid deck plans open, and I'm like, 
deliberately looking at where we are and how I, love I can it. take I love advantage it. of it. I am going to pull up the intrep I have the Intrepid deck plans, actually, as well. You're <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. looking at the one, the PDF one, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, let me let me zoom down to deck 11. So, yes, you guys are on deck 11. Uh, you are by the turbo lift that is across yep. from emergency life support. Yep, uh, deck 11 and 12 emergency yep. life support. Yep. Which means we're on the same deck as main engineering. Yes, you are. Yep. <laughs> yes, you are. That is correct. It's also where you can access the nacelle. All right, so Zed arrives. Yeah, and I'm like, he's, he's right. Captain, Captain. I, Zed, I, Mr. Zed, were you able to verify what I was, what I told you? I transported Commander Ajay. She tried to knock me out with a hypospray. Uh, she what? <laughs> yes. Uh, in the struggle, I, I transported her back to engineering, and I've deployed security teams to... Uh... Wait, you used that pad to transport a second time? Uh, I did. Oh, damn! I hoped it wouldn't come to this. Well, um, you'll find that uh, transporter rooms have been locked out on all decks. Bum, bum, bum. It also appears that security is locked out as uh, communications are locked out as well. Yeah, I was receiving a priority transmission from the bridge when it when it knocked out. <laughs> Let's head At to least you have engineering. Oops. Let's head to main engineering and see if we can figure out what's going on. Creville, no. Uh, <laughs> yes, Captain. So you begin making your way to main engineering, and we are going to cut to a slightly different scene. A slightly different scene. And we are going to see Lieutenant Paris, Commander Ange, and two additional. Two additional gentle, gentle sirs that uh, look actually one additional gentle sir because the other one is actually up on the bridge fucking with shit. But I digress. All right, so we're gonna pivot over to here where we see where we see uh, one lieutenant junior grade Sosiek who is just in the middle of responding to Ensign Zed, um, and he looks over to maybe not Commander Ajay. And says, what was your rank? What was your rank in the other place? I mean, what was it? He was a captain. Captain, right? No, you weren't Were captain. You, in, First the, in the mirror universe, weren't you the captain? captain? Yeah. No, oh, I was right. the captain. No. Krev, you were I still... was like second or third officer. Yes. So he is going to I was a... uh, look to Commander Ajay and to First Officer, Lieutenant Paris. Commanders, I have routed all communication from the main security to my comm badge. He will have no help. We have locked down the bridge and main engineering. Our plan is going just as planned. Good. Now transport us to the bridge so that we can fi finally get this ship on the road. Of course, sir. And uh, he brings out a data pad and goes, doot, 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 nee, nee, nee. Looks a little confused. What's going doot, on? Doot, 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 nee, nee, nee. Sir, it appears the captain has locked us out of all trips. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Sir, it, it's it's this it's this captain, this this captain Absatraso. He's he's always one step ahead of us somehow. I don't understand it. Sir, it. we'll do this the hard way. It's fine. We here's just have your, to get up to the bridge before them. Here's your modified phaser. Thank, Thank you, you sir. To, oh, wait, I don't get one. No, we only had components to modify two phasers. You were the one that brought them. Next time, remember. Hmm. Yes, Commander. I'm sorry, sir. Please don't hit me again. Oh. All right. Go back <clears throat> and try that scruffy little thing. And make sure he's also neutralized. Wait, what scruffy little thing, sir? I, I don't understand. <sighs> the Ferengi. Which friend? Oh, Zed. Yes, yes. I will yes. make sure he is That irritating little shrimp. He pulls up his little phaser and he goes, ha, 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 Why are you still here? Sorry, Get yes, going. going. Uh, yes, and then he zips out the door and uh, disappears. That's correct. Yes. Brilliant. Commander, we should hurry to the bridge. Yes. All right. Now I got to pull up deck plans, and I got to remember which deck... <laughs> The medical five. is on. It is deck five, right? I got you. <laughs> okay. It's deck five. So you guys got a quick turbo lift ride up to the bridge. 
which is fantastic. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's how we're going to do this. All right. We're at a bit of a little bit of a time crunchy here. Okay. A little bit of a time crunchy, which is hilarious. Okay. So I'm going to have both Captain Traso and Commander Paris. <laughs> I want the two of you to roll a d20. Whoever rolls lowest, we're going to do their scene first. Because well, the dice have a story to tell. There you go. Fantastic. So we follow <laughs> Lieutenant Paris and Commander Age up to the bridge. Up to the bridge. As you arrive on the bridge, you find that the bridge has been locked down. The bridge has indeed been locked down. And you can hear... You can hear Lieutenant Shear's voice from just inside, just inside, he is shouting at everyone to stay in the corner, don't touch any consoles, mm -hmm. if you even do so much as move a muscle, I will disintegrate you. And he is just, it's not the nice, kind Lieutenant Shear who just wants to fly a starship and loves what he does, that is this angry, violent, just brutal brutal man who is just screaming at everyone in this moment so you guys tap on the door it doesn't open but you have a code that's been given that you can enter in and then open the door if you'd like to do so sorry what was that i i, I we have a code to... yes yeah we have a code to enter in and you enter it and then you guys emerge you guys emerge onto the bridge where you see there are three crew members who are currently unconscious on the ground on the floor and you see that lieutenant sheer lieutenant lieutenant junior grade is it junior grade no wait it's just lieutenant sheer yes lieutenant sheer is holding everyone at phaser point he's holding everyone at phaser point two of you enter into the fray how would you like to proceed um so paris just walks up and sits in the captain chair and? <laughs> wearing um a uh a imperial um terran empire uh uniform of course fantastic um He's in a few uh, a few notes and opens the shipwide communication. Okay, communications are up. We cut to a scene briefly where we see Captain Treso and uh, Ensign Zed arriving at Main Engineering, finding the door locked down. But okay. they hear the shipwide communique. Hear ye, hear ye. This is your captain speaking. We will shortly be returning to our natural habitat at which point some of you may not like where you are i suggest the nearest airlock for an easy exit until then thanks for flying the iss ragna Doot. and now we cut to a scene just outside of main engineering where we follow along with the captain with the captain and from inside of main engineering captain ensign zed you can hear this shouting you can hear this shouting uh and it sounds like it sounds like moran you recognize the voice and he is screaming at lieutenant commander karev he's saying unlock main engineering unlock it you son of a bitch and you hear what sounds like someone getting the shit beaten out of them <sighs> not to be violent but he is he, someone's getting the shit beat out of them so and since that, could we have stopped by a weapons locker? All oh, the way absolutely. There? There's a weapons locker. There's a weapons locker. Absolutely, uh, right outside. Yeah, and so we could have the as the you rifles. as you have arrived there, you look down that long hallway of main engineering there on deck eleven. You look down the long hallway, and to your left, you see, you see, Petty Officer Bronson with her phaser in hand. She looks down the hallway and she stares at you. And there is a moment of just tenseness. And then you see her let out a sigh of relief. 
She runs towards you, phaser pointing down, and she says, Captain, I don't know if you are you, but if you are, think, think whatever, the prophet's god, I don't know. What the hell is going on, sir? Well, I think there have been some, uh, there's been some betrayals. Uh, Commander Ajay and Paris appear to have been working together. Uh, I'm not sure how many more crew members there are aboard, but one can only presume they've taken engineering. I'm going to kind of assume the bridge. Transporter rooms should still be locked out, but uh, that won't stop. Uh, any competent engineer will be able to un unstop that uh, within, a, I would say, about a half an hour. And unfortunately, my back door should have burned out uh, the minute the bridge control was wrenched away. Um, so I won't have that access. Captain, it sounds like they have not gotten the codes for engineering yet. I, I suggest left him. you move fast. I left him in there. I, I should have stayed. I, I shouldn't have been so weak. He's no. He's helped me so much. It, oh God, I, I can hear it. They're 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 killing him in there. And the tank, uh, you just hear a thwack, thwack. Tell us the codes, you son of a bitch, or we'll fucking kill you. Does either of you have a tricorder on you? Yes, Captain. Uh, can I see it for a sec? Yes. <clears throat> I also have this stun grenade. Um. Well, let's get from the locker. Let's get Krev out of there, and then <laughs> let's. Uh, breach this door with a stun grenade. That sounds great. Um, can the two of you be ready on a moment's notice to breach the door? Yes, Captain. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm going to spend two. Nuts. I'm going to spend two of our momentum to create an advantage. That advantage is going to be that um, I happen to know that Krev has made himself a custom uh, tricorder, and I know it's make and model and uh, serial number. So I uh, will use the current the tricorder I have to link into it, scan the room. And then uh, initiate um, a, an emergency transport by routing through the system to that tricorder rather than using the ship system. So I'm I'm effectively going to burn this tricorder right out. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, also his custom tricorder. Um, but I'm going to avoid using the the com badges so that I don't trigger any. I'm not really using the ship's transporter. I love it. I absolutely, absolutely love it. And we watch as you do, 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 do. And now you're transporting the three of you into the room, just oh, you no. into the room. No, I'm transporting Krev out and then reaching the door with the with the manual access Fantastic. at the same time. You <laughs> you hear what sounds like the charging of a of a uh, a type was it type three, the big type phaser. Three. Type three phaser, phaser yeah. Karev, you look up to see the glow as you're about to be vaporized and suddenly blue glowing light. You feel this kind of burning sound, uh, burning sensation uh, for where your tricorder is. You guys hear the do, 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 and the spark of a type three phaser blasting into the metal of the decking and you hear some cursing and some shouting and uh, you are now outside. Bronson yeah, rushes shift. to your aid and uh, tries to help you up. You have a black eye. It's swollen. Bloody nose. Uh, your arm might be fractured. You were getting literally beaten to death. It is horrible. But you're alive. Oh. Just not feeling good. As soon as oh. the captain hits that thing to open the door, uh, Zed's going to toss in the stun grenade. Beautiful. And here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. We watch as the stun grenade slow motion flies into the room. As it does so, we watch as Moran has taken some sort of device, placed it on the console of the main engineering. He is going boop, boop, looks over his shoulder, sees it coming, goes to turn his phaser as the as the uh petty officer nevik smashes this device the warp core goes woom, 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 woom. everything starts to shake the grenade goes off there is a blinding flash of light and that is where we end today's session. That is where we end today's session, my friends. On a fucking cliffhanger. There it is. Yeah, it's too perfect. I can't. I just, I can't. It's too perfect. Cliffhanger. That is where we end today's session. All right. So, I have good news. And I have bad news. Do you? Do you have good news? This is 
this is this is we are getting very close to the end of Star Trek Valhalla, very close to the end of Star Trek Valhalla. And based on where we're at, we are probably a session or two before the end, depending on what happens next time. But we are very close to the season finale of this of this series. And to be candid with everybody that's watching, we are about to wrap up this series. And uh, it has been wild. And what an ending it's going to be. What an ending it's going to be. Um, opening log. Opening log next week. Got to give it to the actual captain. Got to give it to the captain. You are going to get next week's opening log. It's got to happen. Just makes sense. Started this whole thing. I think you're going to end this whole thing. But... We will pick up next week, next week for season three, episode eight, which will be entitled There is No Need to Be Frightened. That is going to be episode number eight's name is There is No Need to Be Frightened. That is the name of the episode. But I just want to say, as we always say at the end of every session, any final thoughts, questions, comments or concerns? Before we get ready to wrap up today's episode, a good bravo to a good session. Bravo you guys, to did great. day and symbol. Yes, <laughs> I <laughs> wasn't sure where you guys were going to take it, and what was really fun is we have a side chat between Sidereal Day, myself, and Symbol, and so I was bouncing around trying to make sure I want to compliment Captain Traso for really leaning <laughs> it, leaning into it. You pressed, you like, you like made some decisions. But you never push it too far where I have to be like, wait, hold on. It always makes sense. You do a really good job of taking the reins and, like, using the creativity. Uh, but everyone did fantastic. Karev and his scene with Bronson. We had Enz and Zed. We had Symbol just being the fucking captain crazy guy. We got Ajay trying to hype us. Like, there were a couple of moments where this could have gone really bad. And yes. the dice are like, nope, nope. So the good news is, is there's more good guys than bad guys, okay? There's more good guys than bad guys, which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. But we will pick up next session this upcoming tuesday so a week from today same game time same game place for for episode eight and depending God on where damn. things go we'll see what happens it could be we could be starting our next series uh mirror iss <laughs> ragnar i don't know we'll see what happens but in the meantime as i always send you to every session thank you so much to the players for playing without you guys this is literally impossible mm -hmm. thank you to the viewers for viewing vampire love that you're watching man your excitement your comments really just it inspires us oh, and yeah. uh happy gaming everybody we'll see you next week and in the meantime be well be safe and like i say happy gaming good night everybody